We're talking to Shai Agassi in Tokyo, and they've come here to demonstrate uh, a battery swapping program with Tokyo taxis. They have four taxis. Uh, there are Nissan Rogues that are going to be put into service here. Tell me how Better Places plans are coming around the world. You have programs uh, all over the world, in Denmark, in Israel, in Australia. Maybe you could take each one and tell me where you are with those. Well, um, what I'd like to share with you is the timeline that we've had. If you remember, we, we launched the company in January of 2008 in, in Israel, and we always said we're on a four-year program. Um, and we're still on target. We're still on that, uh, on that original schedule. Uh, we've had a, a number of key milestones. Um, obviously, the, f the first one uh, was a demonstration back in Yokohama about a year ago that we can actually do switch. And that was, that was a major proof point. A lot of people were questioning whether batteries can switch in and out of a car and the car will still drive. And I think that, that question was sort of uh, put to bed about a year ago. Um, we've had a, uh, our first massive network deployment in Copenhagen for the uh, COP15 event, that, uh, the big climate um, conference that happened uh, late in 2009. And it was the first ever managed network where it's not just charge spots in the street, not just sort of electricity outlets, but it truly managed, uh, monitored, and, and, uh, um, and safe network that allows, allows us to see, you know, if there's a spot that goes down, if who's plugging in, how much electricity was drawn through each one of them, and manage it through the Internet across a, a, a scaled uh, deployment. That happened in December. Uh, in January uh, of this year, we've proven that uh, – our business model works after about 10 months of, uh, of work with uh, HSBC and Morgan Stanley and the major international banks. Uh, we've raised another round of capital, $350 million. Uh, and this is one of the, the next big milestones. It's the, uh, it's the demonstration that we can actually have a network of switch stations that allow cars, in this case uh, taxis, to, uh, to go ad infinitum, basically to just keep on going. Um, as long as they, they want to switch, uh, they, can, they can keep going. The next milestone will be in Israel and Denmark, and it's the, in the second half of this year, uh, around October of this year. Uh, we're going to have, for the first time, both networks, charging and switching in the same place for consumers to test. Uh, and that network in Israel and in Denmark will allow us to put uh, some of the early uh, customers that we've signed. And we've signed to date uh, about 150 fleets in Israel which account for 50,000 cars to their employees. Um, we've signed those on what we call vision partnerships, and basically they're going to convert all their fleets to, uh, to electric cars over a period of about three to four years, depending on the, on the company. And we've opened a visitor center where they can actually try these cars. So they have, uh, we have about 300 people who come every day to our visitor center in Israel and actually get into, the, into an electric car for the first time in their lives and drive it. Um, once the trial is done, which should be about six months uh, after we start, so somewhere around the April, uh, May timeframe of, of 2011, we're deploying the rest of the network in, in Israel and in Denmark. And then towards the second half of the year, somewhere in the September, October timeframe, uh, we're hoping to open up the network for consumers and then just start delivering cars. At, at about 1,000 cars a month was, was our goal in the first few months. Uh, and we're on track on all these plans. Uh, Renault is building your um, electric cars. Have they come close to starting to deliver those? Are there any hang-ups with that? Um, we, so we've, we've gotten some of the first um, deliveries already. They've shown them in, in, uh, in Copenhagen. We've demonstrated the car at the Frankfurt Auto Show back in September. Um, I drove them. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very fun drive. It's an exceptionally uh, well-designed car. Um, we, we're looking at uh, first deliveries into the trial that I was talking about in, in Israel, so that the uh, September-October time frame. We're going to start seeing deliveries that can actually go on the road, that are certified to drive uh, on roads, and we'll use them for the trials with those uh, vision partners. Uh, and then we're, we're aiming for a start of production in the uh, second half of, uh, of 2011. Is there like a family resemblance between that and the Nissan LEAF? Is there some overlapping technology in there? I, I'm not sure. I mean, they've, some of the things have, have been commonly designed between the two companies. Um, some of the things have been uh, separately designed. The battery technology is, is the same battery technology. Um, and that's the, sort of the primary um, uh, common design elements that they have between them. I think Nissan um, uh, and Renault have picked different uh, approaches on the drivetrain that, that one of them is, is coming from the outside.
outside. The other one is designed in home. So um, I think that the good news with Renault and Nissan is you sort of get the superset of what both companies can do, and that will sort of run with us to the next generation, which comes about 18 months after the first generation. What is the battery system in the, in, in the Nissan Rogue taxis? Uh, we've used in this trial um, A123. Oh, and, interesting. And, yeah. uh, and the switch technology is actually ours. So we've designed the switch uh, together with A123, um, and, uh, and we're using, uh, we're now bringing that technology, the same technology that we've designed, basically into uh, the, the Tier 1 manufacturers to make it into a standard component that car makers can pick off a catalog as a, just a normal switch bay, uh, just like they pick any gearbox or anything else from, from car makers. Great.